we have not been relevant for years. And miss me with this, like, I keep getting, like, insufferable, like, Giants fans and Bills fans, you know, saying things like, I mean, you just won it five years ago. That's fine. I'm not from Boston. I don't expect to win every year. But, Bo, we haven't even had a winning season since Peyton Manning retired. Like, I just want to not know in April that my team has nothing to play for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the right time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for watching on YouTube and thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is that time of week where we have a guest join us coming to us live from Sports Center Fame. And check out <laughs> on the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament coverage. L. Duncan, what's going on? I'm talking about skin What's up, Bo? That's the kind of like analysis that I'm bringing. <laughs> listen, uh, listen. I'm nothing if not consistent. Let me tell you something that's kind of funny about that song, though. So, uh -oh. um, on the show, on Game Theory, on our first uh, sketch, uh, first first uh, essay we did, did thing on Duke basketball, and we were talking about, and we had a yep. line where we said, "This is the closest." that college basketball was getting to hip hop at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and we played the video from basketball and there was a line that the technology somehow cut out. But I said that, look at all these white girls in that video. No wonder they was afraid of hip hop. <laughs> but somehow they didn't make it to the air. And I was like, damn, that Shockingly, was the best line in the whole script. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I saw that clip and I never remember that line. So there it is. Uh, I can um, tell you, I never remembered that video. Like, I want to know <laughs> for the life of me, if you get a chance, look up Curtis Blow's basketball video if you've never seen it. Because apparently I had never seen it. And... I just want to know what the white girls thought they were showing up for in the first place, right? <laughs> like, like I don't think they thought. They were like, yo, be in a music video. They were like, okay, cool. It'll be yeah. about basketball. Okay, right. great. Awesome. And the next thing you know, it's Curtis Blow. Yeah, they're thinking it was going to be like, hey, Mickey vibes, right? Cheerleaders yes. and sort of a team environment and like fun dancing. And then it was a Curtis Blow video. Yeah, I just want to know, or did, did they even tell their parents they was in it? Ooh, but you know right. what? You could get away with that back then, though, Bo, right? Like, because right. there was no internet and nobody to dime you out. And if your right. parents didn't watch the stuff that you were on, you could definitely get away with that. Oh, yeah. And even, if, you know, just be like, yeah, no, I mean, I was living in New York and I needed the money <laughs> and I just answered this ad and they said they were going to make a video. And I said, OK, I didn't know it was going to be that kind of video, yeah. <laughs> but I just I didn't know what to do. So I just went along with it. And I hope you can forgive me. <laughs> Maybe that maybe that's how you do it when you wind up getting caught under that. Right. You definitely plead ignorance. Someone did it to you. You were, you know, you were trying to do the best that you can. Yeah, just yeah. cry. It works. They like they like, damn, now my rate is never gonna go up. I'll never I like 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 I'm I'm tarnished. I've got the scarlet letter. Yes. <laughs> I was yes. in a rap video. <laughs> yes, yes. They'll never look at me the same again. How will I ever find a husband? Oh no. I hate you. Oh, my God. Hey, man. So, uh, you know, you, 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 you are not a Falcons fan, but you got, like, nope. super deep Atlanta ties. And all I said, nope, with such confidence. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a Falcons fan. Hell no. Nah. Nope. <laughs> Never have been. I mean, I support the team. Like, and, yeah. you know, by support, I mean, you know. Like, if they win, I'm like, good for y'all. But it does not affect me in any way yeah. if they lose. I guess I should <laughs> ask you first about your team when you put it in those terms. You are a Broncos fan, and y'all yeah. got a quarterback for the first time in about eight, nine years. Oh, you excited, I, huh? You're going to have Sierra at the games. Atlanta going to be in different hey, all the time. Yes, she is. You know what I'm saying? My goodies. If they don't do that <laughs> when they come out. Um, I, listen, here's what I'm excited about, Bo. Here's what I'm excited about. When I first got to ESPN, it was, I got to ESPN literally like three months after the Broncos won the Super Bowl, right? And I was just coming off such a high. I worked in Boston with the biggest haters of all time. And I was able to talk my shit, which was incredible for me. And I thought to myself, I'm coming to Sports Center. My team's, my team is the champion. I am going to be so insufferable. I'm going to be, my team's going to be relevant. They're going to send me, this is what I was thinking, right? Because I hadn't worked at ESPN long. They're going to send me to Broncos games. <laughs> I'm going to be the, <laughs> well, obviously the Broncos were terrible and that's not really what we do. We focus like on three or four teams. But 
I just am excited for us to be relevant again, for us to be in the conversation. It's like every single year, I love football. It is my favorite sport by far and away. It always has been since I was a little kid. It's my family's favorite sport. Our whole lives were sort of wrapped around Sundays and Saturdays with football. And we have not been relevant for years. And miss me with this, like, I keep getting like insufferable, like Giants fans and Bills fans, you know, saying things like, I mean, you just won it five years ago. That's fine. I'm not from Boston. I don't expect to win every year. But Bo, we haven't even had a winning season since Peyton Manning retired. Like, I just want to not know in April that my team has nothing to play for. That's all I'm excited about. So, yes, I think I'll do all – I'll save the dancing for when we actually win any games. But, of course, the second that we become relevant and actually maybe can contend in the division, the division gets better. So, (laughs) We're damned if we do, damned if we don't. Yeah, man, but y'all got Russell, and it's gonna be interesting to see like what it's gonna be like for you when Russell Wilson like quarterbacks your favorite team. I already that's, know what that is. I know. That I is know. such an interesting guy, and by interesting, I mean we know nothing about that man at all. No, at all. Had, at I mean, all. I, let me let me ask you this, because I probably alluded to this at points, but I just don't think we really talk about it quite. I don't know enough, but you know what I mean. On a scale of 1 to 10, how surprised were you when you found out that Russell Wilson was dating Sierra? Ooh, well, I was extremely surprised, especially because she had just come from Future, right? Who is the most of the, right? Like, you know, you can fill in the blank. And, and you know, from everything that I knew from the people that know them, you know, I have Atlanta connections. It was very genuine from future at first. Like he really was sort of, he had like crushed on Sierra for so long and he ended up, you know, being engaged to this girl that he basically had like the poster on the wall. Cause she's older than him or mm-hmm. we're around the same age. Right. Um, and, and, but of course he's future. And like, she was like, Oh no, I thought, <laughs> I thought till death to us part meant like just us. Right. She's alluded to that, obviously, whatever. So when she when she started dating Russell Wilson, I was like, this is, I did, the, I have done this. I have done the thing, yep. right? Right? Where you date yep. the guy girl, you need, girl, you need, all the sweat. Girl, yes. you, need to, you need to quit messing with them thugs. Get yes. you a good man that go to you, church. Yes, you need you a nice man, right? And I have gone to the nice dude. And, and, and it just, it wasn't even just that, that he didn't, have swagger that he was sort of like corny it was just that i went from one polar opposite to the other and i'm not saying there's like a middle ground on being kind or anything like that but i just think that sierra wanted to go with a really safe choice and uh, uh, russell wilson's really safe he was googling how hold, do you tell a woman she's beautiful like yeah. what hold on like no hold on no okay. we all understand how she wound up dating him the shock Oh, of was him dating Getting her. her. Yeah. That 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 I did not see coming and threw yeah. everything I thought I knew about this man completely yeah. out of kilter. And then I realized, like, have you have you interviewed him? No. No, okay. I never have. So oh, long time, right time listeners, those who go back to the radio days will remember the time that we had Russell Wilson on. And he is dedicated <laughs> to not giving you an answer. Like, yeah. like it is his goal when he shows up. Not to answer your question. And when you hit him with a good question, he acknowledges that your question is good by laughing at it and then answering something completely different where he does not actually have to say anything. And he Mm -hmm. kept repeating this mantra. You know, I'm just small town, Richmond, Virginia. That used to be the capital of a country. Right. right? Like, 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 like he talking about, he he talking like he grew up in a log cabin. Right. He said it like four times. Like, you know. Small town, Richmond, Virginia. Sierra ain't heard him use that voice in the house not one time. They be posting the videos on Instagram, and he talking in the background. And I'm like, what, do y'all have somebody else who lived there? Did you move your daddy in the house? I don't understand who this person is. And so I'm curious, is this going to be your squad now? You're going to get to see it all the time. I and I think you're going to come back. I'm just curious what you're going to learn about Russell Wilson when you actually pay attention for you. Yeah. I, I do. I wonder the sort of, because, you know, maybe John Elway was flashy or showy or those kinds of things. I don't really remember if I'm being honest in his heyday because I was a little kid, right? And like in his hey, hey day when he finally started winning Super Bowls, He's I was sort of in that age, right? I was in middle school, <laughs> like at, in high school when we won those Super Bowls. So I don't remember. We've just never really had a super 
we've never had anybody whose public image was so sort of well constructed and important someone you know the first thing that they do is they go to like the children's hospital in denver like which is amazing by the way but they are a hollywood couple we've never had in denver this idea of a true hollywood couple right and the actress and like he's and so i am sort of intrigued to see how he endears himself to the Broncos organization. Just because I think um, Broncos fans are, I'm not going to use one of those cliche like salt of the earth or anything like that. I just think that, you know, they're sort of, for them, it's about winning, you know? And if you're willing to invest and spend all of this money um, and sort of bargain your future on Russell Wilson, that's really the only thing that's going to matter. And I hope that he gets that, right? That like he can do all of the like, you know, press conferences where he winks at the camera that he wants, but like that's only, that's the only way that he endears himself to the folks in Denver is by winning games. But yeah, it's, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like it was one of those situations where I was like, but think about it, Bo, I was really screwed either way. It was like, it was either gonna be Aaron Rodgers. I mean, or it was gonna be Deshaun Watson. No, thank you, right? So like, I think I landed on the best one because oh, yeah. his biggest fault is that he's kind of corny, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Like, if you had to, like, do that math, then, yeah, Russell Wilson, you take that. <laughs> Holy, like, his life goal works out very well under these circumstances. Holy and totally inoffensive, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's <laughs> cash money yes. right there. But we got we to gotta talk about the Falcons because you mentioned Deshaun Watson. According to the latest research, 90% of employers plan to make enhancing the employee experience a top priority in 2022. After all, a happy workplace is key to attracting and keeping great employees, such as allowing for more flexibility in work schedules. And if you need to add more employees to your team, there's ZipRecruiter. Their matching technology helps you find the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Bomani. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 ratings. Find the right employees for your workplace with ZipRecruiter. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Bomani. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-O-M-A-N-I. Because you mentioned yeah, Sean yeah. Watson, which kind of yeah. overlaps with this. I could not believe the Falcons disrespected Matt Ryan like that. And yeah. then, and then, I could not believe. I'll ask it this way. In 2008, when Matt Ryan mm -hmm. showed up in Atlanta, was yeah. there any way that you would think in 2022 when he left that the Blue Flame would be throwing him a going away party <laughs> that I wish he had attended, though I'm sure he did not, unless Matt Ryan is quietly the guy by the stage in the windbreaker. Uh, uh, yo, the Photoshop job was so bad, too. It was so <laughs> consistent with the Blue Flame. And no, I never would have imagined that because, Bo, like, I... I worked for the Falcons then, Michael Turner's first year, Matt Ryan's first year, and I just remember thinking, wow, they went from like Mike Vick to Opie. I mean, and like <laughs> that's what they want. I mean, it was like the the starkest of swings, as you know, right? And I just remember thinking like they they are eating this kid up because I also worked for the Hawks at the time. And I remember having these meetings right around that same time where it was becoming um, a little too hip hoppy at the Hawks games, right? There was some suggestions that we get a little bit more like the Braves games or the Falcons games where we incorporate country music or, you know, and it, it felt like the Falcons had their opportunity that the Hawks were sort of looking, you know, for, which was to seize this sort of opportunity to shift the entire focus from Michael Vick and hip hop, <laughs> because everything of course is just hip hop if it's black. If it's mm -hmm. of the culture, it's hip hop. But then they could shift and make it more family friendly. And those are that's the coded words that we kept hearing, right? Like now with Matt Ryan, it just feels like the Falcons games are more family friendly, you know, that kind of garbage. Um, and so no, I couldn't have imagined that we would be here where people were actually, especially after 28 to three, were actually, you know, feeling really sympathetic to Matt Ryan, because even I do, and I am not a huge Matt Ryan fan. Yo, I mean, if they were going to move on him, last year was the year to move on him, right? Thank you. Instead, yes. this year they moved on him, 
and didn't really have a plan, right? So they go in on the Deshaun Watson thing. Ryan finds out and is understandably furious. Like, yes. it's one thing that you, I mean, Deshaun Watson's a better player. Yes, but dog. Y'all ain't got y'all don't get the newspaper. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 y'all don't have y'all don't have a subscription to the athletic. You do not have cable. Like how in the world is it? No, you can't do this to that guy, especially a team that has overwhelmingly been like the good in the community team. Yes. And then they made that play. Yes, and I just for couldn't that believe, guy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. I thought for sure, just like everybody else, right, like Cleveland, like Atlanta, like you have to have a backup plan or at least you have to know something that we don't know, right? And so everyone's trying to like, you know, cling on to any kind of pretend, you know, Kyle Pitts. They're like, what? what's he tweeting? He said something about we're going to get better. That means Deshaun's coming. They kept using that he's from their connection. And I just kept saying like, if they don't actually make this happen, what did you just do? I mean, what did you do anyway? Um, because if I'm being honest, like my Falcons fan husband was like, we dodged a bullet. I'm so glad we didn't get Deshaun Watson. And now I can still cheer for the, for the Falcons, even though there's nothing to cheer for. <laughs> but to, to, <laughs> There's not. But the idea, the idea that Matt, Matt Ryan deserved better than that. I, listen, Bo, I am on record for years now saying, I don't think Matt Ryan is elite. I don't. I think he is a really good quarterback who has always benefited from having a hell of a running back. He came in with Michael Turner. Everyone forgets Michael Turner was averaging like 50 touches a game Matt Ryan's first year. First two years, really, right? They rode that thing. They rode Michael Turner into retirement. Um same thing with Devontae Freeman. In fact, the six years that Matt Ryan has been in the playoffs, his running back has at least 1,200 yards and at least 11 rushing touchdowns. Like, he needs that, okay? And I just don't think that he is elite. But I feel like he has always been a top 15 quarterback. I think he had an anomaly of a year when he won the MVP. A lot of that had to do with Kyle Shanahan, who could make anybody look great, right? He's course corrected now. I felt like they should have let him go Two years ago, to be honest, last year they had an opportunity to go get a quarterback, but the year, but this all started with Thomas Dimitrov literally being the worst general manager of all time, and Arthur Blank knowing that and writing that thing too long too. He did it with Mike Smith, he did it with Thomas Dimitrov, he did it with Dan Quinn, he did it with Thomas Dimitrov. He's too loyal, and he's loyal to a fault. And because of that, he let Thomas Dimitrov make one of the stupidest decisions in the world to not only extend Matt Ryan, but then to put. That shit in there about the dead cap. So they get nothing for him, and now they have the largest dead cap hit in the history of the NFL. It's completely nonsensical, and you did that to a man who was the face of your franchise for the better part of two decades, and it just all feels very wrong and also very stupid, so really on brand for Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there it is. Like, and I don't know where they go from here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. What are they supposed know. to do, Bo? Yeah, like, I don't know this... You don't, your plan can't be just to get rid of the quarterback, right? Like if your plan is we're going to get a quarterback, that's one thing. They just got rid of the quarterback and brought in Marcus Mariota. And I was like, no, that it can never be that. Like the thing about the Vikings and the Vikings keep re-signing Kirk Cousins and keeping them. But I get it because they're like, what you're telling us is just get rid of him. But we don't have a plan to get somebody. Yes. Yeah, it's too hard. To, you're, addition by or sub, addition by subtraction does not work with a quarterback. It's literally the one <laughs> position where it, there has to be an addition by an addition. You can't just lose one and be like, "That's it." It just it makes it's it's so stupid. It's the whole thing is so dumb. I don't understand how they got here. And I don't know, you know, with Deshaun Watson again. I don't know like what happened there. If it was just purely about that with Cleveland, I actually felt like. Atlanta would have embraced him in a very different way than Cleveland would have, right? Like, I mean, let's just be real. We tend to rally around each other, questionable pass or not. That's what we do. And I just felt like it would have been a better fit, right? Like, how yeah, do you think Atlanta it, would have embraced him? It had been a better fit until it wasn't. Because the one thing about it is, as we learned with the Michael Vick dogfighting uh, situation, rally of people around you could also tear a city apart yes, like yes. the thing for deshaun watson anywhere he winds up going man you better ball 
And look, quarterbacks yep. every now and then have hiccup seasons. Like, no matter yep. how good they are, we can go up and down, and just about yep. every one of them we can find an early in their career season where, for whatever reason, it was just a hiccup year. I yep. thought that was going to be Watson's last year in Houston where Hopkins was gone and everything else. No, yep. he balled out of control. But if he goes to Cleveland and it's a hiccup year, woo-wee, it's going to be ugly. And But, I mean, he got all that guaranteed money, so they're going to have to learn to make peace with it. But, they, it, man, ball, young man, ball. If you know what's good for you, ball. He certainly has the team around him. I mean, he does. He has a better team. Like, if Deshaun Watson, if his whole purpose is to quiet the critics or whatever by winning, he certainly has a better chance of doing that in Cleveland than he does in Atlanta. There's yeah. just – they continuously put themselves in a position where, like, they're just not watchable. You know, Atlanta mm-hmm. – Hawks are going to do their thing. They're going to, maybe they're going to make a postseason. Maybe they're not, but they're going to be fun to watch. There's something to sell there. There's just nothing to sell for the Falcons. And I just, I, at, at this point, it's getting to a point where you got to wonder for Arthur Blank, like, I know how much he loves football and I know how much he loves his team and I know how much he loves the idea of ownership, but you just have to wonder, like, are you, do you have the stomach to do what actually needs to be done? Because if he had the stomach for it, he would have let Matt Ryan go a few years ago, if I'm being honest, right? And then you would have avoided this entire situation. Bo, you've got to know. Like, isn't there something in your life that, like, you just know in the moment, I can never come back from this? Like, 28 to 3, like, once that happens, there's oh, just an one. intangible. But I'm saying, <laughs> Bo, like once that. But seriously, I I understand why you don't get rid of them the next year or even the year after. But after that, after it's time because you have got to realize after that happened, Matt Ryan was never ever ever going to lead that team to a championship. That was his best opportunity. And after what happened, it was too demoralizing. There was it was just irreparable. There was irreparable harm there. They needed right. to move on from him then. But what were we just saying though? You can't just get rid of the guy. You got to have a plan to get one. And then they tabled it for four years. And all they did was get rid of the guy. (laughs) By the way, how much does it stink to be Baker Mayfield these days? Dude, listen, I have been so ingrained in the women's tournament. Has he got a job anywhere yet? Or No, he's, no? he still got the job he used to have, which is the job he's he doesn't is, have anymore. Oh, God. Could you imagine if there's a world where he has to, like, just go sit in the quarterback room with Deshaun Watson as his backup? Like, I'm oh, here no, for oh, that. Oh, no, he can't. No, he can't come. They, he, he can't. They need to. They, I mean, whether he still worked there or not, somebody still need to put his stuff in a box and send it to him. Like, he can't walk back. <laughs> Never come he back can't walk facility. back in them doors ever again because he he the guy that you got to walk out with security like you can't trust that he's the reason why you be like yo y'all y'all ain't even got to do this he the reason why they got to have security walk you out yeah because we got to watch everything that he does like he's the dude to walk i'm good i'm good i'm good and then turn back around yeah i see <laughs> i see that oh, um wow they humbled him jack but you know <sighs> Baker Mayfield is one of those like situations where I imagine if he's he's never been a part of any team that I've cared about, but I imagine if he's on your team, maybe that appeals to you, the chutzpah or the, the braggadoche, whatever it is, but he's never really, I think that the thing with Baker is, right, we all know this, it's a calculated risk. If you come out with all that bravado, you have got to be so good. You've got to be like above reproach and he's not. And so there's a part of me that's like, I sort of feel from him again, because he was so beloved by that community. I mean, you talk about a situation that just took such a hard left bow. Like, they loved Baker. He's in every commercial. It's like this, you know, he's he represents the city of Cleveland, blue collar. No one cared about him. He's had to work his way up and grind for it all. It just felt like a perfect marriage. And it just, again, it proves that even for a town like Cleveland that is not used to winning or accustomed to it, just getting that little taste of that narcotic that you talk about, that winning narcotic, will have you breaking up with dudes that you honestly thought. I mean, two years ago, Bo, you would have thought that they were getting Baker's, you know, bus ready for enshrinement, mm-hmm. at least in Cleveland's Hall of Fame. And now here we are, and no one wants him. Apparently nobody. Like, that's the wild part. Like, it's, it's not like he's in the Jimmy Garoppolo situation where he's got the shoulder injury, and so who knows when somebody's sure. going to make one of the worst decisions of their careers and decide <laughs> to bring him on board, right? Like, I mean, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to do it, and it's not going to be very smart, but it'll be understandable because there's so few guys who are out here. What I said about Mayfield, and I've been saying this from the very beginning, I was like, I'm worried about him because chip-on-shoulder guy, at every turn, he has defied 
what people said, right? He was a walk-on in college. He became one of the greatest college football players of all time. Lost his job at Texas Tech. He said, I'll show you. Went, paid his way, or I'm assuming his parents paid his way at Oklahoma, (laughs) and became one of the greatest college football players of all time. Became the number one overall pick. Had a really good rookie year. All of this. But I was like, but at some point, man, unless you're Tom Brady, you're going to hit a wall. And then what are you going to do then when now all of a sudden you – maybe they were right. Like for the first time, he's had to truly consider that maybe those people were right. He's the St. Peter's of (laughs) of football, right? Like Cinderella stories are really cool and great and fun. But at some point, the disparity and athleticism and talent starts. And when it goes bad, like Cinderella stories don't just lose close. They lose bad they either win or they get their ass kicked and it feels exactly like that with Baker because at the end of the day as much as I sound like again another cliche Tom Brady still had those intangibles that you look for in a quarterback Baker Mayfield didn't that's part of why he was sort of overlooked and right is that he didn't exactly have the accuracy the arm strength the height any of those things that Tom Brady had so at some point you've got to be fueled by more than just moxie yeah and I feel bad for him no man because it just all went you know what I mean? Like so he quick. Went, I mean, he was playing for the extension. And it's one thing to be like, okay, cool, but I'm going to get another year out here, you know, show, show them what time it is. And they went and flirted with this dude dead in your face. And you know he better than you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even yes. like, like there's no confusion to this. They let you know what time it was. It's, and I – I found it to be a little passive aggressive, like putting the, the thank the fans post after all they did was invite of Watson course. in. However – I can't say he. I can't say that there was a, any good reason to wait, right? Yeah. Like it, like it was over. It was time to go ahead and say it. The writing was on the walls. Writing on the wall, like you saw it, you know. Um, but Baker is passive aggressive. I do. I. I do still think that a a huge factor of this, the element of it, is that it's not exactly like they went and traded for Captain America, right? They didn't go trade for for Tom Brady, their savior. Like, they went and traded for Deshaun Watson, who, yes, while being much more talented than Baker Mayfield, everyone clearly knows that, has 22 women accusing him of sexual assault. And you were willing to overlook that, make him literally change the way they do contracts for quarterbacks now. Like, like, it's a historic contract. You were able to do... and, And when you had Baker Mayfield there and had said... Like, as previous as, like, a month and a half, two, two months ago, like, he's your guy moving forward. And it just, I think, I think it's just the, the, the amalgamation of all of those things was, like, a lot for Baker. Because I wonder, and I think he obviously would have acted like this either way. But I think the being incensed, like Matt Ryan, being yeah. incensed like Baker Mayfield, it's because it's Deshaun Watson. Yeah. By the way, you just touched on something that is a very interesting part of this Watson story. I saw a post on uh, Pro Football Talk about this, that... The other owners apparently are not happy with the Haslam's for this contract they gave Watson, not because of the morality of it, but because they changed the game on guarantees. And the thing about guaranteed contracts in the NFL, I'm not sure if all of our listeners slash viewers understand this. If you guarantee money in a contract, you have to put that money in cash into escrow. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't trust that they go have the money on the back end. Right. People have actually proposed at some point about maybe getting rid of that. You must be crazy. So if right. you're going to guarantee two hundred eighty million dollars for Deshaun Watson or however much it is that you're guaranteeing, you got to have that money in cash to put into escrow. So now that they've done this and to a degree reset the market on quarterbacks, the next time some guy comes up and is like, all right, I want my three hundred guaranteed. You got to have a three hundred to put in in order to keep him. And so they kind of blew the box, and they blew the box on this guy. Correct. Right? They blew the box on a risk. Yes. A huge risk. And, again, the most polarizing figure in sports right now. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think that a lot of dudes really get that, like, this one is hitting women in a much different way. Correct. Because it's not about the criminal. I, I try to make this point. It's like it's not about whether or not the actions are criminal. Like this is something different that we're talking about here. And I don't think the league even gets this either. That like this, just because you don't think it's a big deal or you just think he a little nasty, this is going over different with the other side of the aisle. And it's it, it's hitting in a way that honestly I didn't expect. I know so many women who have been taken advantage of, myself included, in situations like that 
where your massage therapist got a little too close. You don't have to, it's not even that you have to be the massage therapist. It's put, putting yourself in situations where you feel this sense of discomfort whether it be blatant or not in situations where you should not be made to feel that way right and like for me it was i had a massage one time that was like it had me swearing off massages with men for a really long time before you know a good therapist told me and and talked to me about the fact that that was that man that did that not all men but i think bo the problem and the thing that's so hard to to swallow here is that you have to use your powers of deduction, because that's essentially where we're at with the situation, right? If you want to have an opinion on it. And you have to ask yourself, what seems more reasonable? That 22 people got together to lie on this man or that even one of those women isn't lying? And is, is that like, an, and if it's one, it's one too many. I, and I just, I, that's I think why this is resonating with so many women is the idea that like we can just go, oh yeah, no criminal charges, woohoo! Like now we can feel free and clear to like celebrate this dude and just like, move on from the distraction of sexual assault. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to swallow because like, that's my job, Bo, right? Like I, I'm going to go yeah. on and do his highlight. Like, and it, you know, and it's like, it feels wrong. It feels dirty. Yeah. Like I feel like the league, again, it's always interesting what they think they can and cannot get away with. And I think the league on this one is really just kind of overplaying their hand if they wanted to. Cause let me tell you somebody they could have got away with still allowing to play adrian peterson when that yep. thing came up with adrian peterson and his kid and it's kind of mm-hmm. like as horrifying as i think it was in the beginning they could have got away with playing him and it was like nah we're gonna park this dude this yeah. isn't this isn't what it's gonna be it's like you could say that watson you know did not play last year but the circumstances around that are still very gray as to why exactly it was that he did not play because my understanding is that the nfl had actually cleared him to play like that they were willing to let him go out there last year, but there was just the beef between him and the organization. And so that went the way that it did. And I mean, they are able to get away with so much. And it's just because we've decided, I think we've all grown so cynical that we don't expect anything out of anybody. And thereby we don't necessarily hold anybody accountable for anything because we expect, you know, so little as a result. But like I said, don't you guys worry accountability is coming in the form of the city of Cleveland. It may not come in the, in, in the presence of victory, but in the presence of defeat, that is when you remember just how long people's memories are. Like you on Twitter, people forget about Ben Roethlisberger's stuff until his team lose. Then all of a sudden bathroom is trending. <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Like it's never going to feel, it's never going to be exactly how, if you're a PR person, like the hardest working people in all of PR right now are the Browns PR because there is no way that you can slice this that still makes it palatable for everyone to root for Deshaun Watson. It's just impossible. It's impossible. Even if the, the standard is there with the football that we expect, it is still just, it, like I said, it just feels wrong. And they're never going to make that whole or right unless 22 women come out and go, all right, guys, jig is up. We totally lied on this man and we were paid to. Unless that happens, which I don't foresee happening, but who knows? Unless that happens, this is just never going to sit right with people. It's just not. And not he's never going to be a likable guy. You want your quarterback to be your most likable guy. Even if it's not because he's Opie or a Boy Scout like Matt Ryan, you still want him to be likable. Baker Mayfield is like annoying to me, but he had something for those fans. You need the image there to be something that you can put in commercials or you can put on posters. What's the image for Deshaun Watson right now? What is the image? Because the idea that we had before of him, Bo, is long gone. This, you know... This, this church boy who, like, you know, walked around the facility. This is this is what I'm hearing from people, right, inside college when he's coming out of college football. Deshaun Watson, like, basically just walks around and delivers sermons to people. Like, he's such a good church boy. That's, that's over. Um, so what's the image? What's the image? Yeah. Because there's lots of good players, Bo. You're right. But Deshaun Watson was the good player, but that was so likable, paying for people's you know, paying for the, the the lowly workers at the stadium, paying for them to be able to pay their bills. And, like, that was his image. And that's over. No, you're right. You're right. Now I want to ask you one last thing before we okay. get out of here. 
Our friends at CarMax have reimagined car buying to deliver a truly flexible shopping experience that puts you in control. Because at CarMax, you have the freedom to shop online and on the lot. Once you find the right car, you can buy online with home delivery in select markets or choose express pickup at your local CarMax. And CarMax has you covered with a 30-day money-back guarantee up to 1,500 miles. Learn more at CarMax.com. CarMax, car buying reimagined. Where were you when Chris Rock got slapped in the face? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bo. I was sitting right here on my couch, and I had zero interest in watching the Oscars, because why? And I was on Twitter. I was actually watching the Stanford game. And I, uh, I look on Twitter, and I see, was that just real? And I had no idea what they were referring to. And then I saw a friend respond and go, the slap was not real, but the keep my wife's name out your mouth was real. And so I'm so confused because they didn't hashtag Academy Awards, but I'm like, what's happening? Then I start seeing stuff. So then I'm like, Omar, we got to flip over to the Academy Awards. I start Twittering. This is the best thing that Twitter is for, Bo, right? Like I hate yeah, Twitter. Instant except search. for in these moments, Right. I hit the search. I see the international version that everyone saw where it was like the full, unedited, uncensored version. And I, I immediately was like, this was not... Did you think that there was any facet of that was fa that was fake? Because no. Chris Rock... Right? Like, Chris Rock's reaction was very much of a man that just got smacked on national television no. and had no idea it was coming. That's how cynical we've gotten that people yeah. think... Uh, I think also part of the reason why people thought it was staged was because... Who would ever do such a thing, let alone Will Smith? Like, it's so mind-blowing. Like, I was talking about this with somebody today. I think the three most shocking things to happen on television in places where I might have seen them are things I did not see live and I was better for. One, mm -hmm. when J Justin Timberlake uh, accidentally pulled Janet Jackson's uh, breast out. Yeah. Two, the malice at the palace. And three, this. And in all those cases, somebody had to tell me first what happened. Right. Yeah. And thank goodness they did, because otherwise I would have had no way to conceptualize in real time that these things had actually happened. Like sure. I got to have the moment of, wait, what? I don't you know. Can't I, fathom I, it. I, I needed that primer. Like I needed somebody to walk me up to the line yeah. before it happened. And that's what happened with me with this. And, you know, it goes down. I think we'll look like a sucker. Um, yep. Like it's. And the thing was, and I didn't realize this really until recently, my man laughed and then realized he wasn't supposed to laugh. And then he, you know, said to himself, what would Pac do? And then hopped on his horse and then went up there and did it. And I'm just like, nah, man, this is not, this is not what's up. Pac would not have walked up on that stage. He would have beat his ass at the Vanity Fair party. I just keep, I keep going there, Bo. <laughs> like if you wanted to, if it was truly about your wife's honor, then, and, and you feel like being gallant is in beating someone's ass for telling a joke, then you wait until you inevitably see that man backstage, right? Normally these things, it's not that these things don't happen. They just normally happen backstage or at parties and we hear about them and we get secondhand accounts or we get like grainy video on TMZ. The idea that he would just walk up there and to do it to another black man was so... <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about all this, Bamani, is the just the the everyone having an opinion, even though their opinions are under considered and based not in reality, but just what they think. It's like to watch this become a cultural war, to watch this become about whether you're chivalrous or care about your family. Now it's become an indictment on alopecia. I'm like, what is happening? I saw a headline from the Los Angeles Times that used that to say that. It's time for the end of jokes about black hair. Okay. See? What see, the f did what, any of this have what, to do with black you. hair? What are we doing? What is happening? And why can't you just get your stupid opinions off in your group text? Like, why do you have <laughs> to take this nonsense to Twitter? The, this is the worst part of it. This was a weird situation, but you know what, Bo? You know this. Hollywood is filled with with weirdos they're yes. all weird <laughs> it's a weird situation it's it's not more nuanced than that like it's just yeah. a bizarre the whole thing is so bizarre and yeah. we are all grasping at straws about what it means and like the deeper context no, it, it means he mean got anything. slapped it, it means he got slapped Thank in the you. face at the oscars now my thing is can you imagine having to keep going 
<laughs> Yo, he's a G for that. Not only did his jaw take it, which tells me it was kind of a slap because uh, it was a slap. No, it move. was a slap. It was a slap, but he didn't move his feet. Like it was, you know, he took it like a champ. I'm just saying, Chris Rock did. But then to have to stand there and be like, and the award for like, it was. That's how I knew because he was so thrown off. And you know how comedians are. They are built for this. Like they are built for chaos. They are built to talk their way out of. I saw a joke that was actually really funny. But again, in that moment, someone said. Chris Rock would have won, you might have seen this, if he said, wow, if he gets this angry in March, imagine how angry he gets in August. <laughs> right? Which would have been hilarious because for your listeners that don't know, August yeah. Oh, no, no, let him figure is, it out. Let him figure yeah. it out. Okay. Let, right. let right. him figure right. it out. I tell there you is. this, though. If Chris Rock would have said that, the Oscars <laughs> would have been over. There wouldn't have been a no melee. best picture. There would have been a no me- best picture winner this year. <laughs> like, like, if he had done that, if he had moved that fast and got there, Will Smith would have, well, and see, on one hand, I'm like, Will Smith would have had no option but to, but if you're Chris Rock, you only say that if you're ready, right? If like, you're ready, yeah, you want another chance. Will come. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like, all right, cool, let's go ahead and get this in here. But then if he does that, I think that's when Jada participates, Baltimore, don't forget, right? Like, <laughs> like that's, that's when there's a yes. high heel that's yeah. involved and this whole thing shuts down. And trust me, let me tell you what the, the theme of next year's Oscars would be. Hashtag Oscar's so white because it wouldn't be a black person in the no, house. Denzel, sorry, brother. I don't care no. if you got nominated for playing Othello or King Lear or whatever the, this year. Okay, no, you can't get in. Forrest Whitaker, sorry, brother. Your You're trophy's out. no good here. None of us would be able to get in after that. Oh, no, we'll go back to the balconies where there's yes. no chance that we could storm the stage because we'd have to jump from the ceiling to do it. Yes, yes, yes. What a night. <laughs> L. Duncan. Uh, check her out on the Good Sports Center. Uh, first take, her take. It's a podcast. Check that one out. It was a pleasure as always. Bo, love talking to you, friend. Thank you for having me. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this three times a week. Gabe Bassane and Adi Khan handling everything behind the scenes. Thank you, gentlemen. Also, thank you for watching on YouTube. Also, check out Game Theory, 1130 Eastern, Sunday nights on HBO. It's a television show. I'm on it, and it's pretty entertaining. Uh, You know, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. And we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. (laughs) 